thank you for joining us. Namaste. We had a focus a little while ago on the feet and I thought today we would focus on the arms and how they contribute to being in postures, you know, how we, if we start a pose using our arms, how does that then inform the rest of the body? And we'll just have a play with that. And it's probably useful to have a belt. I was using some blocks today, but we might not necessarily use that. So um, we'll have a practice today informed by the arms and how the arms connect into the body. It's not just about connecting here at the shoulder, but it's all the way through that shoulder girdle. So let's begin. So the first thing we're gonna do is just lay on your mat with your knees bent. If you find it useful to extend the legs and then slide the feet up, you can do that. And then just, just have that relationship where you've got the bent knees, the heels into the sit bones. And so this way, your lower back can rest into the floor. And we're gonna place the arms out, shoulder height. And then we're just, I'm taking my left hand, which is furthest away, and I'm gonna just try to thread it across the chest and touch my right hand, which of course brings me a little bit to my side. And then I slowly touch through the arm and then bring it long to the other side. So I'm just taking that hand as close as I can in and scooping it across the upper chest along to the other hand and then slowly sliding back. So you may begin to feel how we're initiating with the hand and the arm, but it actually connects into the rest of the body. So we'll do that again. Slide the hand across the chest, over the other arm to the other hand. It brings the legs down and then you can slide it. And if you slow it way down, you can start to feel how incrementally the shoulder blades start to come to the mat. But between the shoulder blades comes to the mat, then the other shoulder comes down as you extend through that arm. Now we we'll bring the opposite hand up and slide it across the front of the chest all the way to the other hand and then slide it back and down. I actually should have had you just notice what your arms were like before you started that movement. We're gonna do it again, just cause we're gonna check in here and just notice what you're feeling in the shoulder blades perhaps, or in the hips. And then we'll do it one more time. So I'm sliding my left hand across the chest, across the opposite arm to the hand. And then I slide it back. And as I slide it back, I start to roll through my shoulder girdle all the way to the other sh scapula, shoulder blade. And then the opposite side, so my right hand slides over and rolls my body over on its side, and then I slide it back. And again, just notice what's happening. And then we're gonna do some arm circles with our arms together in this position. So start by rotating the hand so the fingers come down. See how far you can keep those fingers on the floor. Now you may have trouble with that. Just see where you go and then see if they can stay on the floor till they get to the legs 
and then they start to cross over the thighs through the torso and you're trying to touch the floor again as soon as you can with the hand. So meanwhile the elbows are crossed. If I was with you I'd give you a nice little tug in those elbows which would create space between your shoulder blades and then you slowly bring the arms overhead and then they begin to rotate down again so the fingertips roll down and then you come to the thighs and then cross over the other direction if you can if you did the right first do the left this time and then as you start to bring the elbows together you're trying to reach those fingertips to the floor when you get to about shoulder height you can really press through those elbows touching the floor and then you open the arms so they come up now i like to call this taking off your jersey and putting your jersey on or taking your shirt off and putting it on and uh, this will help us with our skills later on in life if we can continue this shoulder motion so now we're going to go the opposite direction right now my arms are kind of out to an x and then i'm going to start to cross them try to keep the fingertips on the floor as i come to crossing the elbows above my chest and then i work my way down the torso as crossed arm as i can until i uncross down by the thighs bring the fingertips out again and there comes a point where i need to really rotate my hands so my fingertips come to the floor in the other direction and then if you can remember which arm you crossed over do that again coming into that place where the elbows are on the top and then coming as far down as you can and bring the hands out now i realize as i've been instructing you through this that you may have a shoulder issue and you may need to modify it so you may not be able to cross it over your body and you may just need to sweep the arms on the floor for a while depending on your range of motion so i apologize if i was doing something where your range of motion can't quite fit there so now Roll over to your side and come up to all fours. And we're going to do a very similar pose like we did on our back, but we're going to do a first uh, a diagonal stretch, then um, thread the needle. So I'm on my hands and knees, and my right hand is the far one. And I'm going to take it down towards the left shin. And then you can kind of take a little action and roll through the shoulder to get a nice shoulder stretch. A couple of breaths here. And then inhale, slowly roll that arm back, place the hand down. And take the opposite hand and start to lead with those fingertips down the diagonal towards the opposite shin. So this time it's my left hand to my right shin. And you can press more into the forearm if you'd like or the upper arm. And then inhale slowly coming up. So I get by doing that motion, I get some shoulder stretching that it's hard to, to obtain in other positions. I feel this kind of stretching that you know I, it's 
I don't normally feel in other positions. So I don't know about your body, but you might feel something new. So now thread the needle by bringing the left hand through and then extend the right hand out. And what you're trying to do is have straight arms so you can press back into that shoulder. So both arms are straight and meet each other. And if you want a little bit more stretch, inhale the top arm up to the ceiling. We'll just go that far today. And then slowly bring that hand down. Just switch around here. We'll bring the left arm through, so thread the needle. Bring the top hand on and really press the hand down and extend through the top arm, rolling back into that shoulder. And if you want a little more stretch, extend that arm. Up. Bring that hand down, come back up to all four. And if you have your belt, you can use it to support your elbows for the next few poses. We're going to do a little bit of downward dog and upward dogs. So we're going to have a little play here. And the reason it's nice to have the belt is if you put it down at that little chip on the elbow, it just supports your arms and keeps your arms really stable. So, since we're initiating poses from the arms today, come down, walk the arms a little bit forward. And I, you have to play with that tightness because sometimes it starts to slip. Yeah, so you might have to adjust it a few times. Actually, I think I could tighten it just a little bit more. So place the hands down and actually walk them a little bit forward. Now to go into downward dog, Really press through the hands and the arms, and then tuck the toes under and come into downward dog. And again, of course, I'm feeling like I could tighten my belt. And then go down its big toes together, knees wide. I'm going to tighten my belt. Because essentially using yoga props helps just give more information to your body, helps give you some support. So again, inhale, come up, walk the hands forward, really spread the fingers, really press into especially that first finger knuckle. And then start to press through towards the shoulders. Tuck the toes under and go into downward facing dog. Then bring the knees down and we'll just keep the knees here, but you can keep the toes tucked and then go into upward facing dog. Just notice how the belt actually helps support you here in the half upward facing dog or I don't know knees on the floor upward facing dog and then again press through the arms again into those shoulder blades tuck the toes under into downward facing dog and then again bring the knees down lift the chest through into upward with the knees on the floor. And then come 
come back into pressing through the shoulders. So we're really getting those arms lengthened first, then bringing the leg up. Now this time, if you're up to it, you can do it like we just did or come into upward facing dog this way with the toes tucked. And then press through the arms, really press through the arms to come through down with dog. Again, if you need the knees on the floor, you can. And then again, coming to upward facing dog. And then pressing through those arms, coming to downward facing. Bend the knees down and take the belt off for now and come down on your belly with the elbows forward. So bring the elbows forward, you put your head, forehead on the forearm and the palms are together. So press the hands together forehead on the forearm and then slowly reach the hands forward really reach through those fingertips start to circle them around coming up and then the legs just follow up into Salambasana and if you're able to stay there, you can then circle the arms forward again. And then coming down. And again, bringing the elbows together, forehead on the forearms, pressing the armpits down. And again, extend through the arms and then sweep them or circle them back. Come into Salambasana. Couple of breath, lotus pose. And slowly sweep the arms forward. And slowly come back down. Bring the elbows together, hands up to the ceiling, forehead on the forearm. And then one more. Extend through the fingers, sweep the arms behind you as the legs come up. Couple of breaths here. If you're up to it, you can bring the arms forward and then slowly come down. Now, if you're able to do the next pose, I mean, there's there's variations, so we're going to go through a few variations. You're going to bring the hands underneath you, palms on the floor. You can also bring the fists there, but if this is too uncomfortable, you can just bring them next to your side. So this is also a variation on uh, locus pose. So bring your forehead, your forehead, your chin forward, and then slowly lift the right leg up. And then bring it down. Inhale the left leg up. You're really pressing those hands as best as you can, forearms into the floor. Bringing the leg down. Right leg up. Down. 
left leg up, down. Now we're going to do one of the variations. Bring the right leg up, bend at the left leg, and see if you can support the shin or the thigh. But try not to rotate the hips out, but rotate the hips down towards the floor. And then release the legs. And then the opposite leg, inhale the left leg up. Bring the right foot on the shin or on the calf or on the thigh. And then bring the legs down. And you might just want to roll a little bit side to side because it might be your elbows are digging in, but if you can stay with me, you can always come out if this doesn't work. We're gonna go into a third section if you're up to it. And if you're not up to it, you can just go back to one leg and then the other. So again, this time you're gonna aim the mouth towards the floor. We're gonna to try to bring both legs up. So you can take an inhale and an exhale and an Inhale and an exhale, and on the next inhale, lift both legs off the floor if you can, and then slowly release down, come back up, and press with the hands, and then we'll just put the knees on the hands to just massage the hands a little bit after them being underneath for a while. So you can just massage the hands with the knees. Cut the toes under, that helps. Stretch the arms in this way. And then you can come down to just sitting on the shins for a second. And bring hands into namaste for a few breaths. If you can't sit this way, you can sit in easy cross legs this way. Just with the idea, just notice in this position how the arms and the hands are. Just bring the hands forward, lift them up, come up to your hands and knees, and then see if you can feel the leg through the fingertips by swinging the leg forward, extending through the back leg, and bring that foot forward and the arms are up. And exhale down. Just standing in the middle of my mat. So probably feel pretty kind of warmed up, but you also might feel like, you know, you need to shake those hands or arms out. So we'll just really try to extend through those fingertips. And again, bring those arms up. Now again, here's where sometimes comes in handy to use the belt around your elbows. This might help you really feel that length through the arms and the toes. So again, inhale coming up, feel that length. Can you feel how extending through the arms? They can be a little forward. It doesn't have to be above your head. Feel how extending through the arms brings length to the rest of your body. And then you can exhale down. When we use the belt though, of course, this is what happens. <laughs> you can't quite bring the arms next to your side. And then again, inhale the arms up. Exhale. If you 
want to keep using the belts. I'm going to keep demonstrating with the belt on. You don't have to do that. So for the next pose, we're going to go into warrior one by extending the arms up and then bringing the back leg back. Feel that length up through the fingertips. Bring those arms forward, just shoulder level. Bring the back foot in and then the arms down. Maybe that's the way to go into it. I don't know yet. Inhale the arms shoulder height and then inhale them up, bringing the other foot behind you into warrior one pose. Bring the arms straight in front of you and the back leg in and the arms down. I'm going to need to step back a little bit to give myself room for the next pose. <laughs> so again, inhale the arms up, extend. I have my right leg behind, you can have your left leg. Now, really extend Extend through those arms over the thigh and then bring the back leg up to warrior three pose. And hey, you might feel more supported by using this belt here. And then come back to warrior one and then bring the arm shoulder height and bring the back foot forward, arms down. And then the other side, inhale the arms up, bring the other leg behind you in the warrior one, bring the fingertips as far forward as you can go while the torso is over the thigh, back leg up, warrior three, there with their asana three, back through, warrior one, Inhale, arms to the shoulder, foot together, arms down. Then just take the belt off for a minute and shake out the hands. And then for the fun of it, <laughs> we'll finish off the active part of the class. Um, as we're using the arms and you might feel a little bit of power now. So we won't use the belt for this because you need your arms separate in this pose. So come into, again, the hands in front of you into downward facing dog. And then slowly come into plank Pressing into that, I'm into the right hand. And can you come into side plank? Feel how the arms support you here. And then you roll back into plank. Downward dog. And then again, into plank. Bringing the foot down. Coming into side plank. And then coming back over into plank, downward dog. And then just come down to your knees. Just a couple of breaths to rest if it's a challenge, but we'll go through that again. And if you have it in you, Hold it for a few breaths on each side. If you're really struggling, you can bring the forearm down or you can have the, come over with one leg behind or one leg in front. So those are another option. So we'll do it one more time, see how you go. 
So again, you're pressing through the arms into the shoulders. The sit bones go as far back as you can. Tuck the toes under, downward facing. Then we come into plank, roll over into side plank for as many breaths as feels right for you. Coming back over into plank, rolling into side plank on the other side. And back into plank. And then we come down and have a little shake of the arms. Just you know, move your arms a little bit, just a little bit of spiraling and through the arms and just notice, you know, what kind of range you feel in your shoulder. What kind of, do you feel a connection from your arms into your body? And when we move our arms as if they're separate, you know, as if they're just an appendage that has no deep connection into our rib cage and into our whole back body, we forget that we have this huge wingspan that comes actually from way down at the tailbone, at the, in the sacrum that allows us to, so bring the hands out to the side and just slowly bring them up and feel if you can feel how connected the hands are into that whole sacrum area. Maybe you don't feel this connection and that's okay, but you can sort of play with this a little bit with the breath and feel if you can imagine that connection, arms down, wingspan into that whole sacrum tailbone area and then put your get yourself into some kind of shavasana whether it's regular shavasana feet bent feet on the chair feet up the wall just find your way into whatever position works for you and then let yourself settle into whatever position you're in. And as you're breathing, can you feel the connection of the wingspan from the fingertips all the way down the spine into the sacrum and the tailbone area? And you exhale. And when you inhale, it really fills out all the way from the lower spine into the fingertips. And it's okay if you can't really feel the connection. You can actually imagine, try to imagine that connection. Just notice the space in the rib cage, in the upper chest. Collarbone notches. And see if you can feel the throat softening. Back of the neck, soften and lengthen. Base of the head, soften. Your scalp, soften. 
your forehead widens and softens. Your temples are softening. Space between the eyebrows widens and softens. Your eyeballs rest into the eye socket. Cheeks are softening, the jaw soften, your lips, teeth, and tongue are all soft, and your chin is softening. slowly begin to reawaken the body, bring a bit of movement into the feet and hands, and give your body a little bit of a stretch, and you can slowly roll to your right side and come up to sitting, and perhaps today just see if you can play with, as you breathe, noticing how the arms can move away from the body with the breath without feeling like really separate, but still part of that wingspan. Maybe it's the image that will help you feel that connection deep into the body. Thank you for watching and joining us. And namaste.